Hey everyone, I just wanted to record a really quick rough video here to show you how fast and easy it can be to select things out of backgrounds in Photoshop using the pen tool, which is my, my go-to tool. This is what I use for every single mock-up that I make. And the reason that I wanted to show you this is because um, I know that I've had discussions with a few of you and a few requests to show how to um, cleanly cut things out of backgrounds in Silhouette um, using Trace and Detach. And so behind the scenes I've been trying to figure out a good way to do that so I could show you a quick tutorial about it. But quite honestly, you just can't. Uh, it really is just a limitation. There's only so much you can do in Silhouette. You're better off getting um, ping files of your products already created that you can drag in or investing in Photoshop and learning to do this yourself, um, which really is like, you know, the whole teach a man to fish type thing, right? <laughs> so, um, and it makes you feel confident and it's exciting because I know Photoshop is intimidating, so people um, are scared to try it. I also know that, um, you know, people are budget conscious in their businesses. I totally get that. And you're like, I don't want to invest in another tool. But sometimes it's worth the investment, and it truly, truly is with Photoshop because not only can you easily select things out of backgrounds like this, and there's several other ways to do it, which can be even easier um, if you're not used to the pen tool, but you also have all the other capabilities that Photoshop has of color correcting and working with the tools in there to kind of hide... Um, problems in your images or to deal with shadows and um, you just have so much and and if you didn't know you can get Photoshop first of all there's a free trial but you can also get it for ten dollars a month on the photography plan which also includes Lightroom which is another um, software they have that I um, don't even ever use and I have the photography plan. Like, um, I don't. I didn't really need Illustrator anytime soon, so I just got the photography plan, and that's what I'm using right here. It's Adobe Creative Cloud, and it's a million times worth it. So you can see that it's only been a couple minutes, and I've already selected all the way around this, and I have nice, pretty smooth edges on the outside. And then we're gonna go in. We're gonna get rid of all this here inside the handle and it's a little bit um, might be a little boring for you to watch me clicking around in here but I just want you to see real time how quick and easy this can truly be and consider investing in Photoshop and I'm not an affiliate yet although I would like to be <laughs> but um, I recommend Photoshop because it's the best. It really gives you so much control. Your things will look the most professional um, and you want to look like a pro so people are going to want to buy from you. So it's worth it. I'm just going to zoom out and we'll delete that. Okay, I'm going to add a new layer of white just so it looks nice and clean. And then I'm just going to come in here and kind of do a little dust up on the edges where some parts got kind of bumpy. This is very rough. I would be more careful um, if I were creating this for sale. But this is the kind of thing that you can't do in Silhouette. And I love Silhouette and I think they're doing a lot to improve their program. Um, you can even do selections by color now which is cool. That's a neat feature that you can also do in Photoshop but they don't have the years and years that Adobe has uh, behind them for creating this just like really stellar program. I'm just gonna clean up these last edges just so you can see what's possible with about, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes of your time once you've learned how to do these initial steps, which may seem scary now, but I promise you can do it. There we go. We have the initial mug selected. 
now there's things we can do to make this better. Like, it looks a little warped. I think this top edge is still a little high because I was taking it kind of an odd angle. I can use the transform tool and sort of smoosh this up a little bit, make it look more natural. Okay, that's looking good. And then what if we want to change the color? It looks very yellow, but it is a white mug. If we turn on this hue and saturation, we can drag saturation all the way left. That gets rid of all the color. Then we can pull lightness to the right to make it lighter and lighter and more bright. We don't want to make it invisible, so we also can use another thing in here. The um, levels, curves is, a, is another good one to use. If I drag this too far left, we lose the top edge completely, so we don't want to do that. But we do want it to make it you know, nice and crisp and bright. And you can just play around in here until you get the effect that you're looking for. And I noticed that there's some flaws in here, like down on the lower left, where I could lighten that up. I could fix that if I want. I could also, this bright spot, we could fix that. Um, so all these things could maybe take another just couple minutes of my time. But there's this cool um, tool over here that looks like a band-aid. And then if you option click, like I'm trying to cover up the bright white part with this sort of medium shade. And the reason it looks brown in my circle is because I'm sampling on the layer that's underneath these color adjustment layers. So I'm, as far as Photoshop knows, this is what I'm sampling from is this. But then we have those other layers above that are making it look white. And there you go. And I can just flatten this down. And now we have a nice mug. It's on a transparent background. We can move it around. We could add shading underneath it if we wanted to. Let's do that just for the heck of it. Um, I'm going to do a very, very rough shadow layer. Um, just so you can see kind of a quick, <laughs> quick version of what I do when I'm creating this for your files and just kind of shaping it to the space and then turning it down and I can double that up and then I can say filter blur I like to do a motion blur spread it out a little bit I could turn up the opacity if I wanted I could scooch it over. I kind of like to have it shading on one side or the other. So I could play with that. I could add another layer if I wanted. I could drag it down a little bit, make it bigger. And again, I could make it lighter. This is just fun, like at this point. <laughs> But, you know, if I wanted to here, then I could trim this and save it out as a ping file, throw it on a background, and create my mock-up and silhouette if I wanted. And this just took a few minutes, right, to do all this and get from this hideous before picture to this fantastic after picture. And the only way, really, you could do this is in Photoshop or... Um, or another graphics program that has similar capabilities to Photoshop, but you can't do it with Silhouette um, or probably even with Cricut, um, Cricut's program. So it's worth it. It's worth $10 even for one month to set up a whole bunch of files for yourself and be able to use them or to purchase already created mockups that like mine, like the ones I sell or the ones other people sell or, you know, free ones here and there online and um, that are Photoshop files so that you have the capabilities to really just dig in and do whatever you want. So I do highly recommend it. Um, I wish I could show you great ways that you could do this with trace and detach and silhouette but it just honestly after hours of struggling it can't be done so i hope this helps and um reach out with any questions